Hi and welcome back to our lesson on A plus uh, managing and maintaining your PC. Uh, we're now jumping into chapter six, which is supporting hard drives. <clears throat> now, the hard drive is the most important permanent storage device in your computer, and supporting hard drives is one of the most important tasks on a PC for a PC support technician. In this lesson, it'll introduce the different kinds of hard drive technologies that have accounted for the continual upward increase in hard drive capacities and speed over the past few years. The ways the computer interfaces with a hard drive have also changed several times over the years as the techniques for communication between the computer and the hard drive continue to improve. Now in this lesson you're going to learn about past and present methods of communication between the computer and the drive so that you can support both older and newer drives. You'll learn how to select and install the different types of hard drives and tape drives and you'll learn enough about floppy drives so that you can support these really old storage devices. So let's start off with the hard drive technologies and uh, interface standards. Now the hard disk drive, also known as the HDD, most often called a hard drive, comes in two sizes for personal computers. Now the 2.5 inch size is the one that we use for laptop computers and the 3.5 inch uh, size is used for desktops. Now as you can see behind me in the, in the graphic. Now in addition a smaller 1.8 inch size hard drive about the size of a credit card is used in some low-end laptops and other equipment like mp3 players. Now in this part of the lesson you're going to learn about the technologies used inside uh, a hard drive and, or in, and about the, uh, the various standards, cables, connectors that a drive might use to interface with the computer. Now the two types of hardware technologies used inside the drive are solid state and magnetic. Now, in addition, some drives use a combination of both technologies. Uh, here are important details about each. A solid state drive is, is a, or also called SSD, uh, is called solid state because it has no moving parts. These drives are built using non-volatile memory, which is similar to, similar to that what we use for a USB flash drive. Now, recall that uh, that this type of memory does not lose its data even when the power is turned off. So in an SSD drive, flash memory is stored on what we call EEPROM, or Electronically Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. Uh, now these chips are inside the drive housing, and the chip also contains grids, in row, grids of rows and columns with two, with two transistors on each intersection that hold uh, a 0 or a 1 bit. Now one of these transistors is called a floating gate and accepts a zero or one state according to a logical test called the NAND, which stands for not AND. Therefore the memory is an SSD, is also called an, a NAND flash memory or NAND flash memory. Now EEPROM chips are limited as to the number of times transistors can be reprogrammed. Therefore, the lifespan of read operations does not affect um, uh, the lifespan. Uh, the normal desktop or laptop computers, uh, or four normal uh, desktop and laptop computers, an SSD is rated to last for over 200 years. Now for high use servers, the lifespan of an SSD is considerably shorter. Now because flash memory is expensive, solid state drives are much more expensive than magnetic hard drives, but they are faster, more reliable, last longer, and use less power than the magnetic drives. Now as the figure shows behind me, there are two sizes of solid state drives, a 2.5 and a 1.8, and, uh, and what the inside of the SSD hard drive looks like. Now the magnetic hard drive, uh, a drive that uh, a main drive uh, has one, two, or more platters or discs that will stack together and spin in unison inside a sealed metal housing that contains firmware to control reading and writing of the data to the drive and to communicate with the motherboard. The top and bottom of each disc have a read write head that moves across the disc surface as the discs rotate on a spindle. Uh, now, all the read-write heads are controlled by what we call an actuator, which moves the read-write heads across the disk surface in unison. Now, the disk surfaces are covered with magnetic medium that can hold data as magnetic spots, and the spindle 
rotates at either 54, 7200, or 10,000, and now you have 15,000 RPMs or revolutions per minute. The faster the spindle, the better performing the drive. The data is organized on a magnetic hard drive in concentric circles called tracks. Now each track is divided into segments called sectors. Uh, some people also call them re records. Now, older hard drives use these sectors that contain 512 bytes, but most current hard drives are 4,096 byte sectors. Hybrid hard drives, some hard drives are hybrid because they, um, they use both technologies. The flash component is used as a buffer to improve the drive performance, and some of the hybrid drives perform just as well as an SSD. For a hybrid drive to function, the operating system must support it, and Windows 7 and Vista Supports uh, that support a hybrid drive is called a ready drive. Now, before an SSD or magnetic drive leaves a factory, sector markings are written to it in a process called a low level format. Now, this formatting is different from the high level format that Windows does after a drive is installed in the computer. The hard, hard drive firmware, BIOS, and the operating system use a simple sequential numbering system called a logical block addressing or LBA. And that we use that to address all the sectors of the drive. Now, the size of each sector and the total number of sectors in the drive determine the capacity of the drive. Today's drives' capacities are usually measured in gigabytes or terabytes. Terabytes, each of, uh, uh, each of which is 1,024 gigabytes. Uh, magnetic drives are generally much larger in capacity than SSD drives. You need to be aware of one more technology supported by both SSD and magnetic hard drives, and that is called smart technology, which is self-monitoring, analysis, and reporting technology, which is used to predict when a drive is likely to fail. Now, the system, the system BIOS uses smart to monitor drive performance, temperature, and other factors. Now, for magnetic drives, it monitors the disk spin-up time, the distance between the head and the disk, and other mechanical activities of the drive. Many SSD drives report to the BIOS the number of write operations, which is the best measurement of when a drive might fail. Now, if Smart uh, suspects a drive failure is about to happen, it displays a warning message. Now, Smart can be enabled or disabled in the system BIOS setup. So now let's take a look at how the drive's firmware or controller communicates with the motherboard. And that would be with the interface standards that are used by the hard drive and the motherboard, and these have evolved over time. And there are competing standards which can make for a confusing mess of standards. So to help keep them all straight, uh, we can use a guideline as we have behind me for all the standards that are used by internal drives, internal drives. The two most popular internal drive interfaces are Parallel ATA, Serial ATA. And Parallel ATA, or what we call PETA today, also called the IDE, or Integrated Drive Electronic Standards, is older and slower than SATA. Now, the PETA drive allows for one or two IDE connectors on a motherboard, each using a 40-pin data cable, or what we call a ribbon cable. And the serial ATA, or pronounced SATA, uh, <clears throat> standard uses a serial data path and a SATA data cable, which can accommodate only a single SATA drive. A new motherboard sold today use only SATA connections, but you still might see many older boards that use a combination of SATA and IDE on the same board, or use all IDE connections. A third internal interface standard is something we call SCSI, or SCSI, which stands for Small Computer System Interface. Uh, external hard drives can connect to a computer by way of an external SATA, or eSATA. SCSI, they can connect through FireWire, they can connect through USB, or a variation of SCSI called Fiber Channel. Now the external standards are discussed later on in another chapter, and uh, internal interface standards are covered in this chapter. And the interface standards define the data speeds and transfer methods between the DIP, the drive, and the controller, uh, the BIOS, and the chipset on the motherboard. And also the operating system. Now the standards also define the type of cables and connectors used by the drive and the motherboard or expansion cards. 
The ATA standards are developed by a technical committee, uh, the T13, uh, and they are published by the American National Standards Institute, or ANSI. Now, as these standards developed, different drive manufacturers called them different names, which can make things look very confusing when reading the documentation or their advertisements. Now, the ATA standards have undergone several revisions, which are summarized uh, in the table behind me. And let's take a look uh, first at the PETA or IDE standards, and then, then we'll discuss the SATA standards. And then finally, we'll learn about SCSI, which is a less used interface standard today. Now, parallel ATA or EIDE drives uh, use what we call ribbon cables that can accommodate one or two drives, as shown behind me. Now, a motherboard can have one or two IDE connectors for up to four PETA drives in the system using two data cables. All PETA standards since ATA2 support this configuration of four IDE drives in the system, which is called the Enhanced IDE or EIDE standard. An optical drive must follow the ATAPI or Advanced Technology Attachment Packet Interface standard in order to connect to a system using an IDE connector. Therefore, if you see an ATAPI mentioned in an ad or a CD or DVD drive, know that the text means that the drive connects to the motherboard using an IDE connector or a header. Other technologies and changes mentioned in the, in the table that you need to be aware of are the two types of beta data cables, DMI, DMA and PIO modes used by PETA and independent device timing. Now, all these concerns are discussed next. Two types of PETA ribbon cables under the parallel ATA, two types of ribbon cables are used. The older cable, 40 pins and 40 wires, and the 80 conductor IDE cable has 40 pins and 80 wires. 40 wires are used for communication and data, and additional 40 ground wires uh, reduce the crosstalk on the cable for maximum performance. An 80 conductor IDE cable is required for ATA 66 and above. Now, as the figure shows behind me, there's a comparison between the two uh, cables. The 80 conductor cable is colored gray with the blue connector always connected to the motherboard. The connectors on each cable otherwise look the same, and you can use an 80 conductor cable in place of a 40 conductor cable in the system. The maximum recommended length of both cables is 18 inches, although it is possible to purchase a 24 inch cable. A ribbon cable usually comes bundled with a motherboard and has an IDE header. Now because ribbon cables can obstruct airflow inside a computer case, you can purchase a smaller round PETA cable that is less obstructive to the airflow inside the case. DMA or PIO transfer mode uh, a hard drive uses one of these two methods to transfer data between the hard drive and the memory. Now, DMA, which is direct memory access uh, transfer mode, or PIO, which is programmed input output transfer mode, uh, the, the DMA transfers the data directly from the drive to memory without involving the CPU. The PIO involves the CPU and is slower and older than DMA. There are different modes for PIO and DMA. And because both standards have evolved over the years, there are five PIO modes used by hard drives, from the slowest being zero to the fastest being four. And there are seven DMA modes, the slowest DMA mode being zero and the fastest being six. All motherboards that use IDE today support Ultra DMA, which means that data is transferred twice for each clock beat, and at the beginning and at the end. Uh, as the graphic shows behind me, we have a snip from an older Intel motherboard user guide that has two IDE headers. Now, because ATA66-100 is mentioned rather than ATA133, you can conclude that the board supports the ATA version 6 rather than version 7. <clears throat> and if we refer to the graphic here, most often when using an IDE drive, the startup BIOS auto detects the drive and selects the fastest mode of the drive and the BIOS will support. After installation, you can go into the BIOS setup and see which DMA mode is actually being used. Independent device timing. Now, as we saw in the table, there are different hard drive standards, each running at different speeds. 
and have two hard drives share the same pay to cable, but use different standards, both drives will run at the same speed of the slower drive, unless the motherboard chipset um, controlling the ID connection supports a feature called independent device driving timing. Uh, most chipsets today support this feature and with it the two drives can run at different speeds as long as the motherboard support, supports those speeds. So now, with, that's all we're going to talk about for IDE and PETA, let's talk about the serial or SATA uh, standards. A consortium of manufacturers called the Serial ATA International Organization uh, or SATA IO uh, and led by Intel developed with SATA standard, developed the SATA standards. Now these standards also have the oversight of the T13 committee. SATA uses a serial data uh, path uh, rather than the traditional parallel data path. So essentially the difference between the two is the data is placed on a serial cable one bit following the next, but with parallel cabling, cabling all data in a byte is placed on the cable at one time. Now the fundamental difference is, uh, uh, is why transfer rates for PETA are expressed in bytes uh, or meg per second and transfer rates for uh, SATA are expressed in gig per second. Now, the three major revisions to SATA are summarized here behind me. And SATA interfaces are much faster than PETA interfaces and are used by all types of drives, including hard drives, CD drives, Blu-ray, and tape drives. Whereas PETA drives are not hot swappable, SATA drive supports hot swapping, now, which is also called hot plugging. Now, with hot swapping, you can connect and disconnect a drive while the system is running. Hard drives that can be hot swapped cost significantly more rate than regular hard drives. Uh, SATA connections are much easier to configure and use than a PETA connection and a SATA drive connects with, to uh, one internal SATA connector on the motherboard by way of a 7-pin uh, SATA data cable and then also uses a 15-pin uh, SATA power connector. Now an internal SATA uh, data cable can be up to a meter in length and is much narrower compared to the 40-pin uh, ribbon cable that PETA uses. The thinner SATA cables don't hinder airflow inside of the case as much as a wider ribbon cable does. A motherboard might have two or more SATA connectors uh, uh, and then you would use the connectors in the, in the order recommended in the motherboard user guide, for example, 0, 1, 2, 3, or so on. Uh, <clears throat> In, in the example here, with the four connectors shown, you're told to use the red ones before the black ones. Now, in addition to internal SATA connectors, the motherboard or an expansion card can provide external or eSATA ports for external drives. Now, the external SATA drives use a special external shielded SATA cable, which can be up to two meters in length. Seven pin eSATA ports run at the same speed as the internal ports using SATA 1, 2, or 3 standards. The eSATA port is shaped differently from an external SATA connector so that has to prevent people from using the unshielded internal cable. And it also looks very similar to a USB, but it shouldn't fit. Now when purchasing a SATA hard drive, keep in mind that the SATA standards for the drive and the motherboard need to match. So if either the drive or the motherboard using a slower SATA standard than the other device, the system will run at the slower speed. Other hard drive characteristics to consider when selecting a drive are covered later in, in the chapter. SCSI technology, other than the ATA, other, uh, another interface standard for drives and other devices, uh, which is primarily used in servers, SCSI, which is Small Computer System Interface, um, these standards can be used by many internal and external devices, including hard drives, optical drives, printers, scanners. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it stands for Small Computer System Interface and is a standard for communication between a subsystem of peripheral devices such as a system bus. The SCSI bus can support up to 7 or 15 devices depending on the uh, SCSI standard. SCSI devices tend to be faster, more expensive, and more difficult to install than similar ATA devices. And because they are more expensive and more difficult to install, they are mostly used in corporate settings and are seldom seen in small office or used in home PCs. Now, the SCSI subsystem uh, 
if a uh, if a motherboard does not have an, an embedded uh, SCSI controller, the gateway from the SCSI bus to the system bus is then the SCSI host adapter card, which is commonly called the host adapter. Now, the host adapter is then inserted into the expansion slot on the motherboard and is responsible then for managing all devices on the SCSI bus. A host adapter can support both the internal and external SCSI devices using one connector on the card for a ribbon cable or a round cable to connect the internal devices and an external port that supports external devices. All the devices and the host adapter form a single daisy chain uh, as shown here behind me and this daisy chain has two internal devices and two external devices with the SCSI host adapter in the middle of the chain. An example of, of a host adapter is shown here behind me and it fits into a PCI slot and then provides one 68 pin internal SCSI connector and then one external 68 pin connector. The host adapter manages all the devices as a single chain and can support up to 15. All devices go through the host adapter to communicate with the CPU or directly with each other without involving a CPU. Each device in the bus is then assigned a number from 0 to 15 called a SCSI ID. And we do this by means of something called a dip switch. Uh, these are dials on the device or software settings that the host adapter then is assigned. Um, the host adapter then would always be assigned SCSI ID 7, which has the highest priority uh, over all the other devices. The order then is 76543210154. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, and then 8. Now cables connect the devices physically in a daisy chain, sometimes called a straight chain. Now, the devices can be either internal or external and the host adapter can be at either end of the chain and somewhere in the middle. The SCSI ID identifies the physical device which can have several logical devices embedded in it. So for example, a CD-ROM uh, a CD-ROM jukebox, or something we call a CD-ROM changer with trays for multiple CDs, might have seven trays. Each tray is considered a logical device and is assigned a logical unit number or, an, or a LUN to identify it, such as 1 through 7 or 0 through 6. The ID and LUN are written as two numbers separated then by a colon. So, for instance, if the SCSI ID is 5, the fourth tray in the jukebox it, uh, and the device is also 5. Um, I'm sorry, the fourth tray in the jukebox is device 5 colon 4. So to reduce the amount of electrical noise or interference on a SCSI cable, each end of the SCSI chain would then have to have something called a terminating resistor. Now the resistor can, can be hardware device plugged into the last device on each end of the chain, or the device can have firmware controlling the termination resistance which makes your installation a lot easier. Now, with various SCSI standards and connectors, the two general categories of all SCSI standards used on P PCs have to do with the width and bits of the SCSI data bus. It's either going to be 8 bits for narrow or 16 bits for wide. And in almost every case, the SCSI standard is 16 bit, the word wide is in the name of the standard. Now, for 8 bit SCSI standards, the word narrow is usually not mentioned in the names for the standard. Now, narrow SCSI uses a cable with a 50-pin SCSI connector, also called a cable. And wide SCSI uses a cable with a 68-pin SCSI connector, also called a P cable. Now, narrow SCSI can also use a 25-pin SCSI connector that looks like a parallel port uh, connector. And I've had numerous uh, customers in the past who were trying to plug in their scanner couldn't get it to work because they're plugging it into the onboard LPT parallel port instead. Now the 80 pin SCA connector uh, or SCSI or single connector attachment can provide power to a SCSI device. Now the SCSI bus can support more than one type of connector and can use connector adapters to plug a cable with one type of connector into a port using a, another type of connector. Now as the figure shows behind me we have a SCSI uh, with this guy's cable. One end of the cable attaches to the host adapter and uh, for best results you should always plug a device into the last connector on the cable. Now the three major versions of SCSI are SCSI 1, 2, and 3 commonly known as regular SCSI. Then there's fast SCSI, ultra SCSI, a variation of SCSI 
uh, is serial and SCSI also is called the Serial Attached SCSI or SAS which allows for more than 15 devices on a single SCSI chain. It uses smaller, longer, round cables and uses smaller hard drive form factors uh, that can support large capacities than the earlier version of SCSI. The SAS can be compatible with SATA drives in the same system and claims to be more reliable and better performing than SATA itself. And now that you know about the various hard drive technologies and interfaces, we're going to head and return to our online management system, complete, uh, complete lab 6-1 that's been posted, and then come on back here for a lesson on how to select and install a hard drive. Uh, this lesson will, will be uh, continued later on. See you.